So here's the 2016 um, section one tabular statement. Um, you see it there, question four. So you can use online or exam papers or whatever you have. Uh, I'm going to use um, just the one here on the screen. I'm going to go through it. Okay, so it's an ordinary level, <coughs> sorry, it's an ordinary level tabular statement, 60 marks. I'm just going to give you the demonstration of the 60 mark one just to make it a little bit easier. And you can refer to this then as you go through it. On the bottom, as we saw before, we have the different dates now. As I said earlier on, the ordinary level one it goes through the dates of the month, so the January 3rd all the way to 26th, and I have all those columns just pre-filled in for myself to make it a little bit easier. Again, as I said, it's probably easier to turn up landscape. Uh, when we move to higher level material, we'll see that these will become months of the year. We just count the months. You can put all the months in if you wish. Just mm -hmm. remember to have the first in, so the first of the first, that's from the balance sheet here, and also the total put in over here on the right hand side as well okay so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to take all these figures and again it's going to highlight different bits and pieces so you know yeah first to the first is um probably the one we're talking about most actually just to highlight the first to the first more than anything else so it's the first to the first normally we see we see balance sheets at the last day of the month so in a higher level we'll see depreciation come off this but we're not just there just yet so buildings four hundred and fifty thousand euros the machinery is 82,000 euros. Um, and we go down into stock. Stock was 32,000 euros. 32,000 euros. Debtors is 28,000 euros. And bank is 30,500 euros. Now, just to be conscious of that, um, we normally, in a final account, if I'm talking about, we normally might see bank as a liability or as an overdraft. Uh, and therefore it should be on the bottom part of the section here. So just to be conscious of that really is all I'm trying to say. Okay, we add all those figures up. It's going to give us a figure of 622,500. All right, down to our liability. So our short-term creditors, 24,000 euros. Uh, rent due was 3,500 euros. Uh, and our capital was 590 thousand euros and then our PL balance in this stage was five thousand euros. And again once we add all those up the top half and the bottom half add up the same thing. So six two two five six two two five hundred. Okay. So now we can come down and look and see what the different scenarios they give us across the different dates in the month. Remember this was the first of the first have it highlighted on the top for you. Um, and keep an eye out because in other questions bank could be an overdraft. So at this moment in time I'll just put it in here our bank balance is actually a positive. It's plus 30,500 euros. If it was down here in our liabilities, our bank balance would be a, as a minus. Okay, so I'm gonna take each of the days as they come. So the first one, so what did, what did we receive? We received from a debtor. What did we receive from a debtor? The key term here is a check. The amount of the check was 3,700 in full settlement of a debt of 3,900. Now I know we said this before, the top and the bottom have to balance just like in a balance sheet. So what effect will it have? So a check, right? How much did we receive? We received a check for 3,700. So where are we going to put our check? We're going to put our check into the bank. So if we receive 3,700, our bank balance should increase by 3,700 with no reason to believe that check is going to balance. So what did we receive that check for? Okay. We received it in full settlement for a debtor who owed us money of 3,900 euros. So the debtor on top of it, he now no longer owes us 3,900 euros. Okay, uh, he paid us 37, he was 39. The difference there is minus 200. And how do we show that minus 200 underneath here? Because it has to balance up. Essentially, if we took 37 from him for a debt of 39, we have given him a discount of 200. The difference between the two figures, 39, 37. We've given him a discount of 200. How do we account for a, a discount allowed it's an expense. It's a selling and distribution expense. We've allowed a discount. So therefore, our PL figure is going to be reduced by 200 euros because as you know, in a PL, expenses get subtracted away. So that will reduce our previous PL balance was 5,000 euros coming from our trading profit loss. And it's now going to be 200 euros less as a result of that discount, which we gave to the debtor. So it's the first date done. Second date then is January 7th. And again, we'll just highlight the key terms for you. Purchased goods, important word here is on credit, and the amount is 14.2. It doesn't really make a difference what the amount is because there's no change to it. So, purchased goods on credit. This was after the first to first, so we have more goods on credit. So, that's going to be our stock on the 7th of January. 
our stock will increase by 14,200. And of course, if it's on credit, okay, so we're going to owe somebody money. Who do we owe money to? People who we buy things on credit from, and those are our creditors. 14,200. That is the second date done. As we scroll down through it, the third date, January 12th, again, watch for the key terms. We paid by check. This time we're talking about our rent, rent that was due at the beginning of the month. I'll highlight all of that. So um, check is fairly obvious enough. So we paid by check. So that's going to affect our bank figure there. What did we pay? We paid our rent. How much rent was due? We can see it. I'll highlight it up here on top for us. Let's change the color maybe to yellow. So we had rent due in our current liabilities there. That rent figure was 3,500 euros. So our bank balance, if we wrote a check, is going to be reduced by 3,500 euros. And our rent due here is also going to be reduced by that 3,500 euros because we no longer owe that rent. Okay. So difference between, uh, sorry, I put it in the wrong column. It should be in the 12th, doesn't it? Yeah, apologies about that. So minus 3,500. Total it up to minus three five not not. You guys will put that in brackets. Minus three five not not. And you total them up as you go. That way, I suppose it'll stop you from doing what I just did there. Fourteen thousand two hundred for the seventh. Fourteen thousand two hundred for the seventh, and minus three thousand five hundred for the twelfth. So I've that date done now as well. So I just cross him out, so I know I've him done. And I'm on to my next date, January 16th, paid by check again. So, and again, just remember, this is ordinary level. We won't see as many checks, but we will see lots of them, but just not as many. Uh, again, a check. So, grants that's going to be bank, a creditor's account balance of 4,100 uh, and received a discount. So, again, the opposite of a discount. Last time we saw a discount, it was to do with a debtor. This time it's a creditor, someone who we all money to. So, I'm going to deal with check first of all. So, the only thing maybe that I need to tell you, or we've had this before, I suppose. Paid by check, a creditor's account balance of 4,100 euros. That was the amount that um, the creditor was owed, really, I suppose. All right, that's the easiest way of looking at it. That's how, That figure there, 4,100 euros, that is the figure that was owed. So that's what's going to have to change in the creditors. So I'm going to go to my creditors on the 16th of January. Yep, yeah, we're going to reduce him by 4,100 euros. That's what we now no longer owe that creditor. What did we pay that creditor? We paid the creditor at 4,100 euros, less a discount of 300. So we paid the creditor 3,800 euros. We paid a check as we're told over here. So our bank balance will be reduced by 3,800 euros. Nothing else on the assets. So that's minus 3,800. The only other thing we have to maybe account for is our discount over here. And this is a creditor, so someone who we owe money to, and that person has decided to give us a discount of 300 euros. That's a good thing for us. That's a gain for us. So that will affect our PL. Our PL that was 5,000 went down by 200, is now going to go back up by that 300. So I put our 300 in there, and that gives us the balancing figure of 38, minus 38, not not, for the 16th of January. So that's that one done. On again, next one. So we're on January 19th. Sold goods again on credit. We sold them for 8,200, but they had cost us 9,200. Okay, so uh, we had this before. So why might we sell something for below? Sold it for 8,200, cost us 9,200. Why might that be? It might be out of season. It might be no longer fashionable. It might be damaged. We don't know. There's loads of reasons why we sell things at below the cost of what they should be. But we sold goods on credit for 82. So if we sell goods on credit for 8,200 euros, again, um, we're selling our credit to someone who bought from us on credit. So people who buy from us on credit uh, are called our debtors. So we're going to increase our debtors by 8,200 euros. So on the 19th, 8,200 euros is going to go in there. Now, the 92 causes a little bit of issue from time to time when we see something like this. What's going to happen with the 9,200? We've lost stock. This is after the first of the first. We have lost that stock of 9,200 euros. So well, we sold it. We haven't lost it. We've sold it, which will make a net difference of minus 1,000. 
And again, as I'm sure you're well aware, if we buy something for 9.2 and sell it for 8.2, we've made a loss of 1,000 euros. It's a selling and distribution expense, again, on loss on stock, as we've seen in final accounts numerous times. Maybe the stock was damaged. Okay, so the loss on stock will affect your PL. It is an expense. It will reduce your PL balance, again, by that 1,000 euros. The net difference at the bottom of negative 1,000. And that's the 19th done. 21st then, so again, key terms, a debtor, so that's fine, a debtor who was owed 600 was declared bankrupt, okay, lovely, so that means they cannot pay us anymore, but somebody was appointed, maybe an administrator was appointed, and they can now pay us 30 cent in the euro, or they can pay us um, 30 percent, now 30 percent of 600 euros is 180 euros, you can just check it on your calculator, but the debtor, starting the debtor, so this is January 21st, he or she is no, no, no longer going to pay us that money. He or she owes us. So we reduce the debtor by 600 euros. What has he paid us? That's the money that's going to go into our bank. Um, I'll put it in here. Uh, it's equals 600 multiplied by uh, 0.3 is 30%. And that will give us 180 euros. So they've paid us 180 euros. The net difference there in relation to that is a minus 420. Now, if somebody owed us 600 quid and they only paid us 180 we've made a loss of 420 but in business world that's a debtor someone who owes us money so if we've given him or her goods on credit they haven't been able to pay us the full 600 they've only paid us 180 what does that mean for us it means we've lost money it's a bad debt and again where do we account for bad debts in our selling and distribution expenses which again will affect your PL. how much will that bad debt be it could be 420 euros it will reduce your PL balance by 420. That's why it becomes a minus, minus 420 there. On to the second last one, so in this question, and again, paid by check. So again, we're getting fairly good at this, hopefully, from the business bank account for the roof to a private house. So if you can just recall, I suppose, when we talk about this question, if I go back to the top, was uh, of Brendan Boyle. And Brendan Boyle was, of course, a sole trader. So sole traders, when, when, uh, when an individual takes money out of the business for personal or private use, as they call it here, that's, what's we call, that's what we call drawings. So I'll just add drawings as a column back in here. You might remember me saying earlier on, always leave one or two boxes underneath. Uh, I actually had four boxes and took them out so it would all fit in uh, on the assets. So maybe if I just insert another box. Um, yeah, so I'll leave two or three boxes so you can fill in extra information should it happen. Anyway, paid by check. This is January 23rd. So our bank account is going to be reduced by 3,300 euros, which is going to leave that figure of 3,300 euros. And the drawings, absolutely. Um, Brendan Boyle has taken 3,300 euros out of the company. So minus 3,300 for that particular date there. And on to the last one, January 26th. Purchased a new warehouse. That's fine for 170,000 euros. We were able to put a deposit, it was paid by check, and the remainder was essentially borrowed. That's all we need. Okay, so a new warehouse. Yeah, buildings, that's fine. So buildings went up by 170,000 euros. We had 15,000 of it ourselves. So our bank account gets reduced by 15,000 euros because we were able to pay it. That has a net difference of 155 positive. Or 26th of January and of course so how much we borrow we borrowed the net difference to 155 and then we'll add it in at the bottom so we have to get some finance okay so a loan basically if you like and that would be in your finance by section of your balance sheet and how much was it for 155 155,000 euros 155 that's the figure there okay so all we want to do now is total those up so um, the 450 plus the 170 is going to give me 620,000 euros. The next one, there was only the one entry, the 82,000 euros. The next one was my one was my stock, wasn't it? It was my stock. Um, so we started on 32, we gained 14.2, we lost 9.2, giving us a difference of 37, not 27, 37,000 euros. Um, 
Next one was our debtors. So we started with them owing us 28. We reduced it by 39. We added 82. We took off 600. And that will leave us with your 31,700. And lastly, then, was our bank. So our bank changed quite a bit. We started with 30,500 euros in our bank. We gained 3.7, we lost 3.5, we lost 3.8, we paid 3.8, we gained 1.80, we paid 3.3, and we paid 15,000. Leaves us with um, a bank balance of 87.80. We total all those up, and that's going to give us a figure of 779.480. Same thing on the bottom half on our liabilities. Let's see if I can bring it back so we can see enough of it. So our first one there was our creditors. We started with 24. We gained more creditors of 14.2 and we paid one of them for 4,100 euros, uh, leaving us with 34,100. We still owe. Um, next one was our rent. So we owed rent um, and then we paid the rent. So left with zero if you like. The next one was our capital. So we started at 590,000 euros and nothing changed in relation to that. Um, the next one was our profit and loss balance. We started with profit and loss balance of 5,000 euros. It got reduced by 200 by, because of a discount. It got increased by 300 because of a discount received. It got reduced by 1,000 in the loss in stock. And it got reduced by 420 um, as a result of a bad debt. And that leaves us with 3680. Um, and then we had the figure for, um, what was that one? It was our drawings where Brendan Boyle took 3,300 out of the company. And the last one then was uh, we got some finance, so a loan really, 155,000 euros. And again, that heads up to 779480. Okay, now again, just to point out, that's the question completed. Just to point out, um, show the assets and liabilities for the 31st to the 12th, 2016. That's the question over there. Uh, it was a 60 marker, so it's a good bit shorter. 60 markers generally take you that half an hour, whereas the 100 markers. You're talking that 45 minutes, and that is the remainder of that question done. Okay, so hopefully that's of help to you.